Anyways, uh, on to the KDE thing. Um, okay, what the deal is, is with KDE 4.5, there is a bug where the desktop auto resorts. If you're using your desktop and you have files on the desktop, my, my honest recommendation to anyone using KDE distros right now is avoid, if you haven't already updated, Avoid updating from your 4.4 KDE to 4.5 unless it's absolutely necessary until they fix this. This is a very recent problem. It's only a little over a week old at this point. There's a bug report for it. The KDE forms have not officially moved it up the thing. Unless I'm reading it wrong, is it is it really that severe of a bug that would keep you from, from going to it? It's not that it keeps you from going like to it. It, what it is is as follows. If you add a file to the desktop or you take a file off of the desktop, the desktop auto resorts all the icons on the desktop. Where this can get to be exceedingly annoying is say you have something like an office document, like a, an open office document on your desktop. As that document's open, open office will write the temporary changes folder, a file, to the desktop. And every time that's written, your desktop will auto resort. So if you're one of these people that does things like, well, I've put all these folders over here, and I've put all these folders over here, and I've put all these files down here, and you have it all sorted that way, it isn't going to stay that way. And if you're using your desktop at all, you, you basically, you're forced until they fix this bug to get used to the fact that well, you could have your icons auto-sorted this way, or auto-sorted this way, or auto-sorted this way. And you just have to learn where they are auto-sorted that way, rather than where you want them to be. It's more on the magnitude of, on a scale of 1 to 10, a 20 in the order of extreme annoyances. Uh, it, it, and it's happening on one of my systems. I haven't upgraded my other systems because I'm hoping they fix it soon, and then I'll upgrade them all. Uh, well, I'm, I'm what, actually the other end of that. I'm the person who wants everything in the upper left-hand corner, top to bottom, sorted alphabetically. Well, no, see, so. that, and if you're one of these users that wants your desktop sorted that way, then this isn't going to affect you. If, if you're a user like me who does, like what I was just saying, like I have all my stuff for work over in this corner, I have all my stuff for fun over in this corner, I have just miscellaneous files down here. It's like my desktop is very sorted. It looks like chaos, but it's sorted. And with it auto rearranging like that, basically I can't find the stuff. I wind up just opening the desktop as a folder uh, until they fix this bug. So it, it, it's hey, isn't there a separate activity you can use instead of the folder view? I mean, it doesn't give you that same uh, ability to move things around. Well, and that, and it, yeah, no, and that's the thing. And I think that's why this is take this is moving up slow when it's not being looked upon as a oh oh crap problem because technically this whole folders thing which I use all the time was not supposed to be part of KDE for whatever it, it's it's one of those features that kind of found its way in but wasn't originally intended so it, it's uh, it's in the initial uh, uh, in the early versions you know this didn't work and then as su it, they got it working and everything was sunk and now it's been broken again so it's like something they changed has now been unchanged. It's hopefully they figure out what it is and change it back. Because <laughs> it's a useful feature if you use it. And if you use this feature, this, you're in a boxing match now with your computer. If you don't use this feature and you organize your desktop like you do, it doesn't affect you. It's, there's users this is going to drive nuts. There's other users who could care less and don't even consider this a bug. Okay. Uh, anything to add on that, uh, James? Or okay, uh, let's move on to the uh, next thing, which is you know the complex topic in bold. This is a loaded question. <laughs> Who wants to start? You know the whole does Windows and Mac steal from open source? Because the. The short answer to that is yes and no, <laughs> and it all depends. I think it's, I think it's a two-way street, it, honestly. It's a it's a two-way street. As far as for what they're talking about, it honestly depends how you define stealing. Um, it, well, and the the thing that I would say is if 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 they are stealing from one another, there's a much greater likelihood of Linux-based things being sued for that. <laughs> 
because they're everything else is closed. Right. Uh, well, it, it's uh, well, and what they're what they're talking about, like if you honestly, if you look at OS ten, large parts of it are based on open source technology that, that were then ad- Apple did additional tweaking on. Uh, and, and other stuff, you know, Safari is a, a, a perfect example of that, and and so are other things. Uh, and, and honestly, a lot now, you know, people will go, well, that's stealing from open source. Like I said, it depends how you define stealing. A lot of this quote unquote stealing that Apple and Microsoft done is stealing with permission. A perfect example of that is KDE. There is elements of KDE in OS 10 and Windows, and of course, all the KDE Linux distros. Well, that's stealing with permission. You know, Microsoft is using parts of KDE in Windows 7 with permission from KDE. Like that new Snap feature. That's KDE code running in Windows 7 to make it. And KDE is actually very proud of this. If you go to the KDE forums, that's like, that's like their, one of their quiz questions on as you sign up for the thing. What operating system is KDE part of? <laughs> It's like they're very proud of that. They're stealing like that that some purists in the open source community consider stealing because they're like, this is open source stuff. It belongs in open source. Microsoft shouldn't have it. Apple shouldn't have it. I'm like, no, there's nothing wrong with them using it over there with permission. That's kind of the point of it being open. Yeah, I I going to say it's like, it's, yeah, it's open source. They can use it. That's there's nothing the wrong other with side that. Of that is, if they're using GPL code, they're supposed to be releasing the source. Well, yeah, and, and that gets into the other type of stealing, which is every so often, both Microsoft and Apple will take open store stuff, close source it, and claim it as their own. And sometimes they get caught and sometimes they don't. Um, and uh, sometimes, it actually gets into the idea of how much do you have to change something before it's not the same product anymore. Right. And like I said, it all depends how you define the stealing and so on and so forth. As long as it's the first type of stealing, stealing with permission, using the stuff, leaving it open source, using open source development to make their product better, acknowledging that it's open source development, you know, not claiming to have reinvented the wheel. I have a little bit of disdain for the Windows 7 marketing ads that claim credit for this feature that I've had on my computer for years, but I understand why the marketing campaign is that way. Um, but it, it's they haven't locked the code down or anything. Where it gets to be a little bit of a gray area is when they base a closed source product on an open source platform, something like Safari, in which the core of it is open source, and it is still open source, but they've put a closed source thing on top of it so that you really can't, it, it, it basically, they're not doing anything wrong, but it clearly violates the whole spirit of what the idea was behind making that thing open source in the first place, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, again, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's that it's a gray area. And, you know, the, the, the topic being brought up here was, well, are, are they just benefiting off of all of open source's work and just stealing from it and then repackaging it in a barbed wire closed, closed wrapper? I don't necessarily think that's what's going on. <laughs> it's, any, any thoughts on that one way or the other? Okay. I take it you have nothing to really uh, say on that, James? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, can we at least agree that why, in sometimes in bad taste, no matter how much Linux fanboys might want to claim it, it's not ripping off or stealing from open source. <laughs> it's. It, it all. I mean, that, that's the thing. There's a difference between stealing and gaining inspiration from something else. Uh, a lot of people are saying that the newer versions of Ubuntu are stealing from Mac because a lot of the new themes. A lot of the new elements are looking more and more like a Mac OS X feature. Yeah, I and, personally think that's the whole reason for the UI change. But that's like <laughs> and, and that's that's the thing. If, if they're using Mac code, then they're stealing. Whereas if they're actually doing it on their own and generating the images on their own and all that, it's it's inspiration, but it's inspired inspiration, sort of. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it's like, and to, and to quote somebody that the Apple fanboys just love to quote all the time, great artists uh, copy, good artists steal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I... Actually, it's, uh, good artist copy, great artist steal. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> so, I, so I reversed great and good, didn't I? Uh, or, yeah. or whatever. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I have misquoted. How dare I? How ever shall I live with myself? <laughs> That's, uh, but, yeah. It, it's... Honestly, I've got to find it and, and put it in the and if I can find it, put it in the show notes or put a link to it. There's this great little thing that every so often goes around Linux forums where it's like it's a little narrative that goes along. It's like any coincidences just happen to be that this was the best way of doing it. We are not copying for any way, signs and so on. It just happens to turn out that the best place for a, a, a button to close a window happens to be in one of the corners. And it's like it goes through all the similarities between UI and UI and UI. And it's like it, this is a similarity because that's what the user wants. This is not copying. <laughs> if, if you do find that, let me put it in the show notes or let me know because uh, that, that's something I'd like to read. I think I've seen it before, but yeah, it's like every so there have been some instances where I'd like to have have that quote. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I I see it around the forums. The next time I see it, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm gonna link to it and copy it in. It's like cause it, it, it says it perfectly, and that really is what it is at the end of the day. There's only so many places to put a button. There's only so many places to put a thing that does this. There's only so many ways to organize information. So at the end of the day, there's going to be some overlap because at the end of the day, all of these systems are being made for a human to interact with them. <laughs> and a human expects to interact with something in a certain way. <laughs> if you can figure out how to completely revolutionize that without the human reacting to it as, I don't like this, you're a genius. <laughs> Sort of what happened when uh, when Ubuntu decided to move their buttons to the left side. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and uh, honestly, while we're on the topic of that, uh, that's uh, I, I try and leave you know the PC Mac stuff out of the Linux show here, but um, I, I'm getting endless flack from that from Mac users and stuff, uh, and that's one of the things I love about Linux. And that is, at the end of the day, if you enable the proper packs and the proper themes, you have complete control over everything in that UI. If you decide this button in the, in the menu bar or title bar up there on a window should be over here instead of over here and vice versa, you can make a theme and tweak it to be that way. And all the tools to do that are there. You don't have to go into terminal and hack it in and say do this and do that. You just go in there and go, no, this here because that's where I want it. And honestly, I think that's brilliant because at the end of the day, if somebody really does want that moved, they can move it for their system, for their login. <laughs> that, that's actually part of the reason a lot of people have been railing against uh, GNOME Shell that's supposed to be coming with GNOME 3. Uh, at the moment, nothing is customizable. That's not to say it's not going to be by the time it releases, but at this point it is a black shell that pops out and the clock is in the middle of the top, I think, uh, and you cannot change anything yeah, about that, it. Yeah, that, that, that's horrible, because one of the thing Linux users, especially once they get used to Linux, and uh, that they love about is getting in there and going, you know, I always just wanted this button to be here because that's where it made sense for me. And as soon as you get used to having that kind of power, you cannot let it go. Because your computer then is exactly how you want the UI to be. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't matter if they get it right. You make it right. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think we're about there because we're going to have, from the way I'm going to have to cut this, five parts. Anything else anyone else wants to say? Or uh, we about ready to tail off here? I'm good. James? Okay. All right, I guess that's a wrap. Uh, uh, peace out all, and uh, see you all next week. Okay.